Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Courtship. Here you will find everything to learn and master competitive programming. So you know the drill with YouTube. If you have not subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos. Great. This video will be super important because we are going to discuss all about the XOR operator which not to mention is the most popular when it comes to DSA and CP as well as we are also going to have a problem solving session in the end and solving some problems is always quite fun right so let's jump straight in and let's start off with an exercise for you guys because now I feel that you are quite well versed with the idea of bitwise operators so we have to find the XOR of these two numbers in their binary form and XOR is denoted by this mathematical symbol this plus in between right plus surrounded by a circle right or an O and then uh, so what we'll do is I know how the XOR operator works but currently you do not so I'll be writing down the corresponding XOR of each of the bits right and you have to guess the truth table of XOR by forming a pattern right so the first bit 1 XOR 0 comes out to be 1 0 XOR 0 comes out to be 0 1 XOR 1 is 0 and 0 XOR 1 is 1 right so if I just write it down so here if you wish you can pause the video so I get 0 XOR 0 is equal to 0 0 XOR 1 is equal to 1 1 XOR 0 is equal to 1 and 1 XOR 1 is equal to 0 great so now can you notice a pattern is that if both of the bits are same like here in this case as well as this case both of the bits are same 0 XOR 0 and 1 XOR 1 is equal to 0 right and if both of the bits are different like in this case in these two cases right 0 XOR 1 or 1 XOR 0 in that case we get 1 right so same bits give 0 different bits give 1 and there's another very interesting fact to notice here is that if I take let's say my 0 to be the anchor point my primary bit so with 0 I XOR a 0 and I get a 0 with 0 when I XOR a 1 I get a 1 right so can I say that if let's say I have a 0 and if I XOR it with 0 right so I again get 0 right the same number and if I have 1 and I XOR it with 0 I get 1 which is again the same so XORing with 0 or XORing it with 0 like both are the common use pronunciations so in both the cases XORing with 0 doesn't make any difference whereas if you see that if let's say 1 is my anchor bit right this is I'm just imagining this so 1 XOR 0 is giving us 1 whereas 1 XOR 1 is giving us 0 so this is the opposite when you toggle any when you XOR any bit with 1 it gets toggled 0 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 when XOR with 1 right so this is the truth table of the XOR operator you do not have to memorize this I know that this is a bit harder to grasp your head around as compared to bitwise and and bitwise or because they were pretty intuitive but still you do not have to memorize this you can think of this in such a way that XOR needs variety variety this is the biggest point of XOR XOR simply wants variety it only gets satisfied when it gets both the bits to be different when it has some variety when it has some uniqueness and it gives a one otherwise if both the bits are same be it zero or zero and one or one right in that case it's bored and it simply gives us zero back so it wants variety in that case it gives us one right so this is the XOR operator and there's another way you can think about it is that if you let's say take up and you will find this notation at a lot of places as well on the Wikipedia page or anywhere and I want you to know this is that usually these bitwise operators can be represented as a Venn diagram so what happens is that this is considered a one right and this is also considered a one so this means that 
this region here the green region is simply when both of the bits are one right so which operator does it correspond to so green corresponds to the bitwise and right because bitwise and needs both of the bits to be one in that case it gives one right but then if i take these two regions as well as this region right these two regions so which operator is the green plus red so green as well as red is simply the bitwise or operator right bitwise or because if any of the bits is one right if the first bit is one or the second bit is one or even if both of the bits are one so this combined region right this is the bitwise or operator indirectly in that case it gives one right whereas simply the red region is our xor operator because it needs that exactly one of the bits is one if both of the bits are one right the part common in the venn diagram it still gives zero if none of the bits is one right the basically the region outside this right this region where none of the bits is one it again gives us zero right whereas if exactly one of the bits is one this red region in that case it gives us one so this is kind of another terminology and uh, another way to remember this right so this was all about the xor operator now let's discuss a few properties although we have discussed two important properties already that is zero xor any bit is the same one xor any bit toggles it so let's move on to the next two properties right great so the first is that what is a xor zero so this is simply a why because let's say a is something like this right and this zero we know is a lot of zeros so when we xor these two as we know that zero doesn't make any difference to the bit so one xor zero will be the same bit again one zero xor zero will be again the same bit at the top zero one xor zero will be one one xor zero will be one right and these two numbers the result as well as the these two numbers are exactly the same because zero didn't make any difference so this is the first property that we have right a xor with zero any number xor with zero is the number itself right but now let's talk about another property that is what happens if we xor a number with itself so a xor so this is simply zero why because again if a is 1011 so we are exoring it with the same number again 1011 and here the definition of exor comes in handy that if both the bits are same it gives zero so what happens is that since both of the bits will always be the same they are the same two numbers that we are exoring in the result we will always have zeros zero will match with a zero one will match with a one right so we'll have simply a lot of zeros here so the result is simply zero so any number a x or zero is a and a x or a is zero right and there's a third property of x or as well that x or is associative commutative all those stuff right so a x or b x or c is the same as a x or c x or b and the order basically doesn't matter right so these are the two main properties as well as the third and two we have discussed above great so now we you basically know all about the xor operator now it's just about brushing up your skills and remember you do not have to memorize those truth tables initially you may have to figure out some mnemonics or some funny ways maybe to remember how they work how the bitwise operators work but after some point you will be like what is one xor one that is zero what is zero and one that is zero what is one or one that is one what is zero or one that is one what is zero xor one that is one what is one xor one that is zero what is zero or zero that is zero so that's the speed that you will develop but that will happen gradually great so now let us discuss a problem on xor that is one of the most classic problems to understand this process better great so we'll be discussing a really good problem right and here's the problem statement so we are given an array a right of let's say size n so we are given n integers we need to find 
the only element that occurs exactly once in a right and we are given that each element occurs exactly twice so the array will look something like let's say i have okay so let's take up the same example that i am using here 26276 so we have 26276 so we know that 2 is occurring twice 6 is occurring twice but 7 is only occurring once right so in this case our answer will be 7 so this is the problem i encourage you to pause the video here and there's another constraint like obviously brute force is not allowed so you cannot go on counting every element also you cannot sort them because that will bring each of the elements to, uh, like 2 will come close to a 2 6 will come close to a 6 so that is another way to do it right but an n log n solution or sorting is not allowed as well as well as using a frequency array to kind of have the frequency of each element is not allowed as well because then you will need one iteration to calculate the frequencies and another iteration to check which frequency is one right so that is the solution another solution but that is not allowed as well because you are only allowed to run a scan once so here's the tricky part of the problem and precisely and exactly often solution is only allowed only one scan is allowed so think about it and here i am with the solution to this great so as i said we'll be using two properties of xor in fact all the three properties of xor that a xor 0 is a as well as a xor a is 0 as well as xor is associated right so if i say that if xor is associative so if i try to find the xor of the array basically if the array looks something like a1 a3 a2 a3 a2 a2 right so here our answer would be a1 obviously right so this means that taking the xor of the array meaning taking a1 xor a3 xor a2 xor a3 xor a2 is the same as taking a1 xor a1 sorry a1 xor a2 xor a2 xor a3 xor a3 because xor is commutative all i am doing is changing the order so now this means that if you carefully see this part this part and any other parts like because every element is occurring twice so we'll have groups of two basically right so this means that all the groups of two will because we can change the order right in xor we can change the order so all the groups of two will come together right if i take them together so what this means is that a2 xor a2 which is obviously zero because of this property this is also zero and any further blocks that are being made of the same number that is occurring twice all of them will be zero what the only element that will be left is the one that does not occur in a pair which will be this so we'll have a1 so in the end we have a1 xor 0 xor 0 xor 0 so on and maybe a1 could be the middle element let's say right so it's like 0 xor so basically there will only be one element left all the others in a pair will give us xor 0 and finally using this property we know that this is simply a1 right so basically taking a pair will cancel that out right and all the pairs will get cancelled out in the end what will what we'll have is the unique element that occurs only once so now let's move on to the implementation through which you will understand this problem better as well great so let's start off you have n right then you have a vector of let's say a of size n and what you do is you take the input for the vector right you can do it like this and then what you do is you maintain a variable let's say this for result that you can initially set to 0 and what we'll do is we'll set res xor equal to i so that plus 1 was the mathematical symbol in code you have to write this caret symbol right usually in mathematics used for power right so that's how you xor a number and this is basically 
taking res is equal to res x or y right so this is the shorthand like plus equals minus equals and what this basically means is that each of the elements we are exoring and we are exoring the whole array in the end because xor is the same in any order the pairs will cancel out and the result will simply hold the unique element so we can simply output res and now let's run it on this input so for this the unique element is 7 right 2 is occurring twice 6 is occurring twice and we get 7 so this is the code for it right i hope you enjoyed the session and you also learned something new we also solved a problem on bitwise operators which seemingly look like they are useless <laughs> right but they are actually useful and you see a problem in every alternate contest coming on them so they are very important xor is the most important one of them because of all these unique properties it has and this was a really classic problem so i hope you understood it if you like the video make sure to like the video basically smash that like button and share it with all your friends whom you think may find it useful this is bharat singla from codechef signing off for now and i will see you next time